Good morning, everybody. That beautiful song was provided by Josh Cook. Oh, you do. Wake up, Missoula. (laughs) 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 All right. Welcome to Wake Up, Missoula. I'm your host, Scott, and this is? I'm your host, Josh. All right, let's talk about some things that are happening here in the city of Missoula. I got a lot of show. Uh, I got, I'm going to talk about some flagship. Uh, I didn't do dubbing stuff on Wednesday. Completely forgot about that. So we're going to have a full show. I got a stop motion video for you guys. I got all sorts of like things. It's like all sorts of things wow. just kind of stacked up over time. Okay, so the stop animation thing that I did was like tw- I took, I, 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 I spent it's 20 cool. minutes on effort, and you can totally tell I spent like 20 minutes on effort. That's cool, though. All right, well, let's talk about some of the weather because we're looking at uh, – 40 degree temperatures today and tomorrow and basically it's only going to get hotter and hotter because by monday you're going to have a high of 49 degrees outside we might even see some 50 degree temperatures going on yeah Mm -hmm. buy some sandbags eh yeah oh yeah uh batten down the hatches time to flood um high 42 low 22 today uh pretty much going to be that way uh all weekend long and beyond so uh if you guys are planning on being out and about it's Pretty much perfect sweater weather, uh, un- unless you're one of those people who wears sweaters and um, basketball shorts. So, yeah. You know those people? Why you got to at me, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did I uh, indirectly uh, attack you? Yeah. Okay. I feel bad. Or I uh, indirectly apologize. No, nah, I wear anything. That right. I, I mean, for me, this whole, like, this whole um, wintertime, I just wore a sweater from Seattle. Oh, nice. And that's it. It was just like a really light sweater. I used to have like one of those sweaters that you can get uh, with like the lamb, like the wool on the inside. Oh, yeah. That was nice. But then this last couple of years, it's been like, eh, it's whatever. I mean, as long as I keep my ears covered, I'm perfectly fine. Yeah. <laughs> Long hair. It keeps you warm in the winter. Yeah, headphones, dude. I always wear headphones to keep my ears warm right? because I'm constantly listening to music. Okay. So, did you guys uh, hear about this new job? There's a, there's a new job. A bunch of 140 new jobs are being um, initiated here, and they're all cloud-based uh, business um, associates kind of deal. So, the whole kind of uh, business model it's uh, Kunzine, Kunzant ATG Missoula Solution Center basically would employ over 140 people to help businesses across the world effectively plan, implement, and optimize cloud-based business processes and technologies. And they're going to be set up shop here in Missoula. So it's a good opportunity to get some new jobs, and you know, technology jobs are the jobs of the future. So oh, any yeah. like manual labor kind of jobs and mining and all that stuff always gets automated. So you got to kind of think about what yeah. the future of we got employment a few is. Years. Yeah, we do. We got a few years before those jobs are. Oh like yeah, because there's always place. there's always a high demand of construction, especially here in Missoula. So vocational jobs are in high demand. Yeah. So, and they usually start you off at eighteen dollars an hour. So think about that, um, and that's usually like the internship, like trades yeah. job, and like. And, and on that note, you know, hmm? as as my British doppelganger John <laughs> Oliver says. You know, jobs are like we're not losing jobs to robots. It's just kind of changing. So, right. It's just it's always been changing. And as Pat Williams said back, um, he he came to one of my uh, classes a long time ago. Is that uh, automation was the one that uh, basically killed all the jobs in the lumber mill. It's like you have all these uh-huh. machines that picked up all the logs. It's like yeah. what well, used to be like, well, just drag them to the river and just let them float down the river. It's like right. completely unnecessary now because yeah, it's you need less and less guys yeah. to to work. Nope. So that's like, uh, and then like, uh, yeah. So anyways, the company has indicated it plans to keep hiring here and has plans to consolidate its workforce in Missoula and perhaps build a new space in the Sawmill District here in Missoula. Uh, the new training program that UM is going to offer roles including data analysis, a- analytics, uh, project management, Salesforce technologies, and other avenues. And of course, on Tuesday, March 19th, the company is hosting a meet and greet at 5.30 at Cambian Place for anyone interested in applying to the company. So if you're looking for a new job and maybe a change of pace, registration is required online, and you can find out more information by going to AGT on Facebook. All right, so new jobs. Yeah. Nope. There's, Missoula is definitely not shy of having jobs. It's definitely, there's no, like, employee issues for sure. What? I'm good. Okay. I just had a brain spasm. Oh, okay. That happens occasionally. Okay. So don't. I was, don't I was worried there for a second. Oh, yeah, no, it happens all the time. My brain sucks, man. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay, so. It's all good. Wow, it's that's it, that's crazy. Like live on the show for sure. Oh yeah, it happens no matter where I am. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. It's don't don't even pay me a bother, man. Okay. All right, so for piano man stuff. In state news, Montana has been has been losing money with their trading with Japan. It's usually the uh, with the lack of use trade agreement with Japan is costing Montana farmers millions of dollars in wheat sales. Um, to, uh, t- uh, Tuesday, U.S. Senator Steve Daines implored the Trump administration to do something about it. Tariffs are basically kind of like taxes and other like yeah. um, you know processing fees that they do when you're shipping. Um, supplies over there. Um, U.S. is still dealing with a big tariff deal with China, in which seems to uh, basically mo- both sides aren't really blinking. They kind of wanted it to be over with, but at the same time, you know, Trump wants to make sure that um, uh, there's good, fair trade amongst the people. But so far, 45% of wheat is tariffed uh, thus far, and Manda hopes to follow its beef trade with Japan when it went from 38% of tariffs to about 9% reduction. So Japan buys more than 70% of Montana's wheat. The state's risk of losing the entire market by the time the Trans-Pacific Partnership goes into full force. I did not know that. Yeah, so it's a... Uh, I love Japan. Yeah. I didn't know we were trading with them. Yeah, we've been trading with Japan since the old days of Mike Mansfield. Mike Mansfield is, uh, of course, he is one of many uh, people in his um, during his term in Montana to help facilitate uh, open communication with Japan. And um, I, ha- I took a class. I was lucky enough to take a class with one of the professors there who um, actually went to Japan in the very beginning where they... Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of traded with Japan the very first, where they uh, brought over a bunch of uh, cows to be bred and used as meat. Hence the beginning of Kobe beef. Nice. Yep. So anyways, that's just a little bit of history lesson. But here's some national news. Uh, speaking of... Uh, um, you know, international Trump and all that stuff, the White House is seeking to take that money from the accounts at the Treasury. Oh, wait, wait, no. My bad. I have to look at where the thing starts. Okay. So, uh, so anyways, the uh, White House is is looking to get some more money through the Treasury and Defense Department to build physical barriers along the U.S.-Mexico border. So far, the president made an, uh, orders after Congress agreed to a bipartisan by, uh, basis to provide $1.375 billion for a wall funds for this fiscal year, but Trump said it wasn't enough. But as of right now, GOP-controlled House voted against uh, the oh wait wait GOP controlled Senate sorry voted against the wall in a resolution that blocks emergency declaration that Trump made back in February. North Carolina's uh, GOP uh, Senator Tom Tills uh, penned the op- an opinion piece where the Washington Post on February 25th saying he would vote for the resolution blocking the president's action to go around Congress to build a border wall, but reversed himself and opposed it on Thursday. Of course, Senator uh, Majority Leader Mick, uh, Mitch McConnell initially counseled the president against invoking the national emergency out of concern it would divide Senate Republicans and test the separation of powers, but he voted with the president on Thursday and defended his actions as lawful. So, so far, um, it did, and now um, this resolution will go to Trump's desk where he will most likely veto this resolution, but neither chamber is expected to get a two-thirds vote required to override the president's veto. So basically, Trump um, made a national declaration yeah. and uh, like a national emergency. Yeah, wall stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, basically the House is like, okay, we're gonna pass a resolution to be basically block the emergency thing. It went through the House, the uh, uh, Democratic-controlled House, and then it went to the Senate. and and. It was opposed. So well, that's good. actually, actually, it went through the Senate, and so that's why they're at the veto process. So anyways, because yeah, yeah. the, the only thing the veto can be overturned is the two-thirds majority, which the uh, Senate oh, yeah. is GOP-controlled. So that's kind of what's going on there. All right, so we have some new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. And then when I come back, we're going to be talking about a bunch of movies that are coming out this weekend. Are you excited for a couple of different oh, yeah. movies? I just went and saw one, and I can talk about that yeah. later on. All right, so stay tuned for that right after this. Yeah. I now have to register as a violent offender. By the grace of God, that is not the end of my story. There are many barriers to face as a registered offender. For me, so far, housing has been the worst. I left treatment headed for Butte pre-release with confidence and motivation. When it was my time to move forward and get back to my hometown, I hit my first brick wall. No one would rent to me. I kept calling but received a we don't rent to your kind. I was a father just trying to get back to my son, trying not to lose custody of him. Getting a safe place to live was key to that. God blessed me with a place to live and now I'm becoming the father and man I want to be.
they also bring their own plastic sheets, which they put down, and that serves as the barrier between the bed and between them, because um, fluid birth can be a little bit messy. Um, and then they bring their own razor blades, which they use for cutting the cord and sometimes episiotomies. They also bring their own gauze and their own cotton for cleaning up and for making pads afterwards. And then they bring blankets for the baby, um, clothes for themselves, pretty much all of that stuff. They'll also actually bring surgical gloves. Um, the hospital does have gloves, but they have a tendency to kind of run low or run out. And so they ask the patients bring their own. Today, public uh, lands have long been a unifying force in the United States for the nation as a whole. We can trace this back to the, United, the U.S. Constitution itself, as one way it strengthened national unity was via the property clause, giving Congress the authority to, quote, make all needful rules and regulations respecting the lands and property belonging to the United States. Public lands have not always been such a partisan battleground. Republicans had much to do with the acquisition, retention, and conservation of federal lands from their role in creating the National Forest System, to using the Antiquities Act, to passage of the Wilderness Act and Wild, Scen Wild and Scenic Rivers Act, and so on. Republicans, though not always a great way to gauge consensus, we could also consider the final votes on some of the environmental and public land laws that seem so controversial today, such as the Wilderness Act or the Endangered Species Act. The latter signed by that tree-hugging socialist. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. So um, as you saw, there's a bunch of uh, wonderful programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. It is the beginning of many of our lecture series that will be airing on MCAT from Global Public Health, which is Issues Lecture Series. And you guys can check all that out by watching MCAT this weekend on channel 189. But of course, always, we have a video on demand at MCAT.org. All right, let's talk about some movies. It's time for some pre-critic. Starting off is uh, the director of Planet of the Apes, the, uh, the new Planet of the Apes type movies. Um, it's called Captive State. Um, so basically, imagine uh, an, an advanced culture um, immigrating to a, a less advanced culture and see how it kind of works out, like it has We've in the past. Done that before. We've done that before. Doesn't but in this in this like case, it's more just like kind of like, oh, so that's what it's like, and it's the movie. Yeah. Is that like? Oh, a, is that a reflection? It, it, it usually is. Life? It's always yeah. usually that kind of thing. So in this yeah. Independence Day blending advanced cultures. With not so advanced ones, the advanced culture takes over, and in this movie, you can expect a reverse America. In this um, alien comes down to Earth and has a dystopian society, but the twist probably is that most humans are pretty much down with this, and so they're just like it's like the humans are the ones that are facilitating probably like the worst of it all, and the aliens are just kind of like oh, there's only like three of us here on this planet with the ships and stuff. So, anyways, yeah. um, if this movie is like any other, there's the uh, ultimate kill switch that defeats all the aliens because third X always have have to have resolution Cause right because uh, <laughs> like like avengers like it's Water. like yeah oh yeah yeah remember it's like a kill switch and it's I, like i think i think that started with uh it, oh it started with Star episode Wars, one episode one yeah the when ultimate they, kill switch yeah when they hit but the they actually switch, had it also made like, sense for them because they were actually robots yeah that makes more but then sense. again it's like they also had their own internal batteries so they ha could have their own autonomy yeah so i don't know why yeah. they had any needed a signal so anyways moving on uh, While well, the rest uh, of the kids are obsessed of what they see in on their media devices, this movie changes ki challenges kids to use their imagination. A girl loses her mom and forget about the good things about remembering her, but when her imagination comes to get her, John Oliver's actually in this movie too, so he's kind of like, yeah. like he's like porcupine, he and it's porcupine. and he does that weird uh, couple like gags here and there. But I don't know. Anyways, yeah. this uh, I'm assuming her biggest enemy is herself, and she becomes better, better, better person for it, and honors her mama's memory in this sad part of the movie because formula, right? Yeah. Uh, also, I'm pretty sure Wonder Wall will be uh, changed uh, lyrics um, to. Uh, Accommodate Wonder Park. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> you're a Wonder well, Park, and it's like yeah, it, it's like it's kind of like there's a question mark at the end of it. I, I've got a, a prejudgment on that movie. I'm gonna say B film at best. Like that's that's gonna definitely you, be at the. 
it's Josh honestly like, Corbin and like, like the whole movie is just like, oh, you got evil monkeys. They're destroying the park, and they're just like little tiny toy monkeys. Yeah. And it's, it's, they're ki- they're adorable. There's there and then, and I'm pretty sure it's mostly like because of her insecurities is what creates the I, chaos. I'm pretty sure now that you mention monkeys and like the whole group, like the cowardly porcupine, you know, I think it's just gonna be uh, um, a cash grab. No, it's gonna be. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a yellow brick road, you know. Yeah, it's uh, Wizard Dorothy. of Oz again. It's, it is Wizard of Oz. Yeah, it's just Wizard of Oz. Yeah, everything is Wizard of Oz. Think about it. All right, moving on. Uh, do you like the Faulkner Stars, Paper Towns, and other things that get teen romances uh, no. tragedy? Well, Five Feet Apart follows young teens who rebel <laughs> against their doctors to kill themselves because their disease is forced to be in a certain distance apart. Do you remember how many feet, Josh? This movie is all about uh, six. Uh, me neither. Uh, watch <laughs> this movie where one of the kids dies just after they fall in love because, Jesus. you know. It, no, no, no. I, I'm just completely making this up because I have no idea how this movie is. So that's oh, why you call you, it pre You think it's going to be that. It's always that. It's oh. always like, you know, it's like, oh, I could die. It's like, I could die too. And it's like, I love you. I love you too. And then and it's like they flip a coin. It's like, okay, you're the one that's dying. It's like, how sad can you be? Okay, never you mind. Wrote down, do you remember how many feet Josh? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I just wanted to, I wanted to include you. Yeah, thank, yeah. thank you. All right, so anyways, <laughs> that includes Pre-Critic, and I have a movie that I have premiering. Uh, it's the Flagship Friday video of the week, and it's called Dimensional Shift. Wah, 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 wah. Anyways, here it is, and we'll be back after like six minutes. can't sleep and literally your parents are gone and we can't do anything fun. Also the TV isn't working. That's not a TV, that's a multiplication table. Oh my god, don't get me started. Besides, we're on summer vacation. We're not supposed to be talking about school and how boring it can be. <sighs> Alright. Dude, don't these things give you, like, really bad nightmares? No, they don't. <laughs> what the heck was that? I don't know. Should we check it out? Is that a little light over there? Turn it off with our ourselves. Alright. Uh, I think my dad said that the light switchers are in here for stuff. Whoa, my mom had a giant party. Wow. <laughs> Told you my mom was a partier. Dude, so many girlfriends does she have over here? Probably you only don't you know. It's around here somewhere, I know it. Wait, isn't this one of those smart boards that doesn't only do the temperature in your house? Oh uh, yeah, it does. My dad bought it like a few days ago from John from work since he got and does this kind of stuff. I wonder if we can hack into it. Mm-hmm. Here. Huh? What happened? Hi! What? How did we just turn on the lights? Yeah. Well, the power's off, but the sound's still going. Oh my god, and it's so annoying. Then turn it off. Chloe? Chloe? Noise. 
you with anything? My friend, we were having a sleepover. Well, I don't know of any Cloney, and I don't even know why you're, what are you doing here. Should I call someone, maybe your parents? No. Well, you can't stay here. How did this happen? Welcome back. Um, oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, okay, so I just have a couple of announcements here and there. I have a bunch of videos I do want to show you guys, so I want to kind of get through this as much as possible. But, of course, social media, big deal. Uh, just to let you guys know where you can find this show and more by logging on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice. We made you write it out twice. You can also like uh, like us on our Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. And you can do whatever they do on the YouTube. Um, you can go to MCAT.org for find more information about MCAT. Of course, spring flicks are happening. It is almost a week away. There is space, but it is extremely limited. So this is $150 for a 9 to 3, kind of like a, in, in place of school kind of camp for the kids. And it goes on all week long. One hundred fifty dollars is a pretty good That's deal. That's a good deal, honestly. Like I used to do like M uh, MCT day camps, and it was about the same. And like, that's that's quality time. Nice. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna show a video, and then when we come back, you wanna play a, a song as we transition into some city council. Oh, right now? Not right now, but I'm gonna show um, uh, Dubbin stuff, which I oh, was okay. unable to do um, on Wednesday because I completely forgot. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's all right. All right, so here's Dubbin stuff, and then when I come back, I'll throw it to Josh. Okay.
Kids and their fro yo. Uh, God, making me run. Uh, 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 you okay in there? Hello? You okay? Oh. Uh, oh. Man. Should have went to Jared. Yep. Yeah. And that's how it happened, kid. That's how you died. Because you were hocked up on Froyo and just chilling out. Oh, thank God they put the undo button. You only got three lives to live. Die once, shame on you. Die twice, shame on me. But if you die three times, heh, heaven help you. That ain't just gonna work. You know, life is kind of funny like that. <coughs> Yep, you can only afford to be stupid three times in your life. <laughs> I almost got with the lady three different times. I kind of want to hear this. Have at it, old man. <laughs> well, it all started back when I was a kid. On dates, we take our girls on a bike ride. But if they were really good, and I mean really good, we take them on a horse-drawn carriage. It was fabulous. But of course, not nothing compares to the invention of the automobile. <laughs> I was so close, but unfortunately, with the invention of the car, that was my last clear chance. And I blew it. That was Josh Cook on piano. Let's talk about some city stuff. In the community meeting, they gave an update on what's going on with uh, money going towards uh, um, the the mill levy that provides money for open space and also land management. So, Heck yeah. so they're going to be talking about all that stuff, how much money actually goes into it, and just kind of more of the details. But I'm going to be talking about more of just kind of like, um, you know, just kind of like how he feels about it, how the progress is actually going, and just kind of everything like that. I'll talk a little bit more about the details about that um, as we get into it. But every year, the Conservation Lands Management compiles data information concerning management activities across 4,200 acres of city open space lands. In 2018, the Conservation Land Programs, a program within the Missoula Parks and Recreation Department, continued to progress towards goals outlined in 2010 Conservation Lands Management Plans. So this is all about the uh, natural parks. So this is like buying land and just providing providing um, natural parks and kind of, so the best example is Bancroft, right? Bancroft Park. Yeah. That's not like a park where kids can do on the swings and stuff like that. It's the parks where you have a natural park with animals and natural life there and, you know, just all that stuff. So anyways, yeah. here is Morgan Valiant. Uh, he's a conservation lands manager for the city of Missoula. And this is what he uh, had to say in the opening. With the passage of the, the uh, conservation and stewardship levy, uh, we've been working really hard to um, develop plans on how that money is going to get implemented and what changes it's going to make within the Conservation Lands Program. And so I've got the, the latter part of this presentation is really going to focus on uh, that proposed plan that we'll be taking to BCAL uh, in early April. So just a snapshot and 
All uh, right, so uh, that is kind of like an overview of kind of what he's going to be talking about in the presentation. The presentation you can watch online in full, but I'm just going to give you the cliff notes. Okay, open space is the main theme of today's presentation, especially how it's going to keep up and also invasive species removal and other investments towards natural parks that we take for granted. Um, projects include uh, big planting projects that require uh, less maintenance when watering these plants until they get sustained themselves. Bull projects works in the best place uh, equals one um, watering job. So a lot of times it's nice to have uh, bulk projects already lined up. So here's Morgan Valiant uh, talking a little bit more about trail closures. If you recall, uh, back in 2015, we did a major uh, our, our first ever full inventory and condition assessment of all of our conservation land trails. One of the things that was really shocking is we mapped 55 miles of designated trails. Those are the trails that we actively manage. But we also mapped 20 miles of user-created trails. So that is a lot. Um, and when you're trying to balance recreation with conservation, Knowing where trails and placing trails in good places uh, really makes a big difference. And so, all right. So, um, yeah, it's in, uh, like one of the things that uh, they're trying to do is figure out uh, what trails they can do at, at any given time. Funding is a big component to this. A lot of times, the money goes into buying the land and not so much as a steward stewardship and maintenance of said lands. Uh, closed trail would be one of those uh, invasive species or whatever. They have to develop the trail, put up signs, and also deter people from walking on off the beaten path. So a lot of times they want to keep the uh, trail as unspoiled as long as much as possible. But that's the thing about trails and trail signs is that a lot of times people tend to ignore those. So, so far, um, 1.2 miles of trail has been made as of the last year, and 1.5 acres of uh, forest have been cleared, even though they try to do about 60 acres of trees each year to help clear cutting and try to uh, lower the amount. And of course, here's a little bit of trivia for you guys. If you ever see any pictures from uh, before uh, colonial, uh, colonials moved uh, to the city, of, like the Valley of Missoula, is that there's barely any trees. There's mostly just grasslands. Oh, really? Like, we're the reason why there's so many trees here in Missoula. There doesn't need to be that many trees, because it's not actually part of the natural environment of, of Missoula. Just so so you guys know. Yeah. All right. And also, uh, um, the Clark Fork River used to kind of split down the middle. Yeah. And then it, they had to br uh, build up the berm. And they also had, they, they had a circus that they would do on the island where they, they do the surfing. Oh, cool. The island used to be, like, huge. And then, oh, okay. they like, at a certain times, they, the, the water would go down on one side while the water went on the other side. And they would have, um, I think they had Ringling Brothers Circus come through. That sounds really fun. Mm -hmm. And of course, I think there was like uh, speculation that, you know, of course, that's where uh, Missoula threw a lot of their trash. And so the Wilma was right next to the river and people would just throw their trash out the window. That's unfortunate. Yep. But that's the past. And this is the now. So uh, that's just a little trivia for you guys. South Hill Spur Preserve is one of these projects that are be, uh, building and improving trails with signs and invasive species removal. They are working with Five Valley Lands Trust, which owned some of the properties up there as well. So Morgan talks about the lack of sharing the trails among bikes and pets. Um, and just this last year, uh, they opened the trail in November. So it was kind of like uh, not too many people got a chance to really enjoy the trail. So let me just find that quote. All right, here is Morgan again. Multiple different types of users need to learn how to share trails and you know trail etiquette I think is another big thing that we need to educate folks on more um, This uh, This location it's uh, you know that connector trail that runs from Spanish Peaks Drive down uh, You have about a thousand feet of elevation gain and loss. It's only about a mile and a half It's a through trail I don't really anticipate that being something that, you know, people are going to be throwing their bikes in their car and driving up there to do that. And so it really, I think, will just be more people getting through the property to get home. All right. So that uh, was a little bit of the uh, South Herd Spur trails and stuff. So uh, Morgan also talks about the Moon Randolph Homestead in terms of some of the old buildings. That's That seems to be one of the main issues that uh, Morgan Valley is dealing with right now, which is trying to see, figure out if they're going to be able to salvage the barn or they're going to basically have to let it uh, fall apart and then kind of build up build it up again. So this is what he had to say about some of the uh, old structures, especially the barn up at Moon Randolph. We've been really concerned about this barn. This is one of the first structures and most well-built structures on the site. I, going into the beginning of this year, we've had some roof collapse. I'm really thinking, at the beginning of this year, I was like, this thing could be on the ground in a few years. Um, and so we really wanted to kind of start to figure out if there's anything we could do. Um, 
very early on, uh, and this was uh, working with Amy Scher over at um, the Historic Preservation Office, she put out this stabilization challenge to all local architects and um, engineers in town. Come on out, learn how to do uh, historic surveys on um, on uh, historic structures, and then also develop a stabilization plan for the barn. And we had a lot of people come out and, and did this work. All right, so as you can see in this picture is that a lot of uh, co contractors and people kind of went to this to kind of understand um, like what had to be done to rebuild it, but also one of the biggest things that they're trying to do is uh, try to uh, wane off any kind of issues with liability. Because when you're in an unsound structure and you invite people to come on down, it's like, you know, you don't want to, like, the roof might collapse, just so you guys know. So yeah. uh, you just want to, like, sign this waiver. So it, in case, because you know exactly that this building is unsafe, but they're trying to salvage it. So what they try to do is, like, it looks like they're, uh, from the picture that I just showed you guys, is they're kind of building an internal uh, skeleton to kind of keep yeah. the building from collapsing. And it's mostly the facade that matters, because if you look at it from the outside, it's a nice, cool old barn that uh, was, is over 100 years old. And it's up at the Moon Randolph Homestead, <clears throat> which uh, by the time uh, the weather starts warming up, you guys can have the opportunity to go up to the Moon Randolph Homestead. Um, Ms. M um, MCAT's own general manager, Joel Baird, did a Missoula Out and About where he met up with the caretakers of Moon Randolph Homestead. And it's really cool because if you actually are a caretaker at Moon Randolph Homestead, you can live up there for free. Oh. And you, all you got to do is just take care of the land and give tours to people. That's pretty cool. Yep. And you just have to sign up. So, so far, uh, these two uh, ladies are up there and they're running the show, but I'm not sure. I, I haven't been updated to see how long they've been doing it, but so far it seems like if they're still there, they've been doing it for about three, four years, yeah. and they do a bunch of uh, summer camps with kids, and one of the uh, funny things that they uh, I like to quote from the, the meetings is that a lot of kids actually enjoyed doing chores during their uh, camp well, up at Moon Randolph Homestead, right. even though like, and then the parents are like, well, they can't do the kids, the chores at the home, and they got the, oh, like, I probably shouldn't do it that way, because it's kind of, oh, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I get what you're saying. I, I, like, why yeah. didn't they chop wood at my house? Yeah, I know, right? Anyways, so that's kind of like, it's fun. There's a bunch of summer camps as there as well. Um, MCAT will be dropping all our summer camps sometime um, um, this month. So uh, if you want to sign up for any of our summer camps, um, we're going to start uh, advertising that pretty soon. So anyways, um, enough about summer camps. So far, uh, Morgan Valiant says that he uh, would f uh, be cheaper to fix the structure than to rebuild the barn at Moon Randolph Homestead when it falls. So if... Uh, it's not an if, it's a win. And, and Morgan's like, it's probably going to fall at some point. And so the contractors are well aware of the dangers of the barn. Uh, June 1st is, the, is when these funds uh, from the existing mill levy will be paid to these uh, projects. So a lot of times they try to get projects going in the spring, try to get things going. Um, a lot of times this is volunteer work. They also do camps with kids to help clear the trails. I'm, ass you know, like, I'm assuming you probably did like an after school deal with your school and maybe they just kind of sent you off and made you like go out the M or something, you cleared up some of the trails and stuff like that. Well, I was homeschooled, but I did pick up a lot of sticks. Yeah. Um, on a ranch. Yeah. So anyways, uh, the money, uh, just so you guys know, this mill levy is four hundred and like seventy-five thousand dollars are going into the open space mill levy. Some will go to purchase open land, while others will contract out work for uh, trail and natural park projects. Uh, Bancroft is a good example of a natural park uh, bought by open space bond money for the later part of the meeting. Actually, I think Bancroft Park was donated to the city of Missoula. I could be wrong on that one, so <laughs> don't quote me on that. I'm, I'm just like thinking out loud. So, anyways, Sorry, just... for the later for the uh, later part of the meeting, they go into details uh, from supplies to tools and personnel hours, and then they basically have enough monies and funds through the mill levy to hire some new employees to uh, kind of coordinate some plans and stuff like that. And so one of the things that they kind of learned from the past is that if they plant trees, they like to plant the trees into bulk projects rather than just like randomly just throwing all the trees around. Because then that way, if you have one place to water, you, 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 only, you have one job to do. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. So anyways, Gwen Jones, she, uh, um, she, uh, uh, let's say she uh, applauds um, Morgan Valiant's efforts within the open space. So I really appreciate all of the work that has gone into the thoughtfulness in terms of with this mill levy, how to how to use it to get the most leverage out of this and the the, the most impact. And um, 
I'm really grateful that we have such continuity and longevity in Donna and Morgan. You've worked at these jobs for a long time, and as a result, you bring great depth and foresight to how to use the 500000 If we had someone who was brand new in this position, it would just be a whole different conversation that we're having today. So I really appreciate the fact that you bring a lot of experience and knowledge of Missoula Valley in our open space because I, it's evident in the, in the presentation. Um, and, and I also just wanted to say I really appreciate that this is looking at the short term as well as the long term. And All right, so that was Gwen Jones uh, with that final quote from your city council uh, parks and conservation meeting. Um, I basically did this in about 15 minutes, so uh, don't judge. Uh, for the full parks and conservation meeting, yeah. go to ci.missoula.mt.us. You can watch on Charter Spectrum, channel 190, anytime. Um, of course, yeah. Um, you can always check out other committee meetings and more by logging on to the official website. Again, that website is ci.missoula.mt.us. If you're looking to uh, complain, <laughs> get a permit, complain some more, uh, you can find out when the meetings are, and you can go to public comment, and you can uh, give your comments, uh, concerns, um, all stuff like that. But if you're going to keep on complaining about potholes, just so you guys know, you go to this website. And you uh, basically type in chip and seal project, and they take old recycled asphalt, and they fill all those potholes. So if you have a pothole that needs filling, go to that website. Yeah. And quit complaining. Because <laughs> this is the website you go to, to to actually complain. And you tell them, it's like, it's on this street at this time, at this place. Please fill in that hole. And they do. Yeah. Yeah, they're really good about doing it. But they don't know where to go. There's like 200 miles of like streets just in Missoula. I... I think it's 200 miles. I'm, I don't know. There's, there's a lot, a lot of miles. Okay, so funny story. I check uh, missed connections on Craigslist every <laughs> once in a while because sometimes they write about Dolce. Really? Oh, it's uh, always about the girls, right? No, actually, one of them was about... One of them we have framed on the wall of some girl asking about my coworker, Charlie. Oh. Who stopped working there, and she's like, ah, I want to go on a date or whatever. And they did. Oh, cool. But so... We just check that every once in a while because we've gotten a few, but most of them, there's like this whole line of like complaints about other people driving in road conditions. Yeah. Which is weird because it's not a misconnection, that's a complaint about the roads. And one of them <laughs> Oh, like, they missed the connection from the tire to the full I, road, I, guess, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, that's a stretch, well, but one of them was talking about like how they're like a street racer and you don't need a 4x4 four four or something. It's like sometimes you do though. And I don't know. There's a, <laughs> Craigslist is weird, man. <laughs> right? It's an odd place to be. Uh, Street race. Yeah. Uh, race me, bruh. Race me, bruh. Yeah. That's a misconnection. I want to race. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for your city council for today. I'll have another uh, a city council. These are committee meetings, so they usually – anything that gets approved goes to the consent agenda. But since this was information only, I, I kind of give you the cliff notes for it. So, anyways, let's uh, – let's see. Let's switch gears and let's uh, dive into – oh, before I get into um, – um, <laughs> before I get into events, I do want to show you this uh, uh, stop animation uh, yes. video that I did a, a little while ago. Praise the sun. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's just basically we got a bunch of new uh, cool toys. We got a bunch of army men. We got some stick bots. We got uh, a bunch of new whiteboard supplies. So we have little whiteboards yeah. so people can draw and stuff for our Saturday drop-ins. So here's a little basically teaser of what some of the kids can do with the uh, Saturday drop-ins that we do every Saturday from 1 to 5.
All right, welcome back. So that was a little taste, just something I just kind of made in like yeah. 20 minutes. I just was like, I'm going to get my phone. I'm going to get a little tripod for the phone and just kind of like do like a sweeping pan around as well. Yeah, and know. for the jet thing, I just like set a timer for the take a picture every five seconds. So I just kind of held it as I kind of flew it around. And then I changed hands when I kind of had that leaving the thing. So it was very, it was very slick. I was really happy that the way it turned out. And I wish I probably would have taken yeah. twice as many pictures to make it look a little smoother. Yeah, so, that's right. yep. you know, but I'm just very critical of my own kid, stuff. Your kid could be doing that. Yeah. Here. I used to do that as a kid, and that helped me become the creative yeah. person that I am today. Because I think MCAT's a great place because it's like everyone's always like, oh, man, if I only could do this, this, and this, I could make a really great, yeah. awesome movie. And like MCAT's a great resource for anybody to check out equipment yeah. and just kind of do their own thing. So the equipment isn't the problem. A lot of times when people get every equipment that they need and they don't do anything, it's, it's very much like, hmm, interesting. Because... Yeah. Um, you know, like uh, what's that called? Uh, is the uh, innovation is the master is the uh, master of invention, or what's it called? It's like a saying. Interpretation. I don't know. Interpretation. It's like uh, I don't know. It's like when you don't have enough, That's but you invent problem. something to make it easier for you on a cheaper scale. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Anyways, but I, I get the gist. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure you guys know, and I'm sure you might be yelling, just like it's this. It's the master of uh, innovation, kind of in invention. So you know. Imagination. Imagination. Maybe. I don't know. It's not that. I just know. I'll, I'll find it out later, but I'm not gonna look it up now because yeah. I don't want to be like. Yeah, you don't want to be typing all that. All right. So, anyways, let's talk about some things that are happening um, today. Um, right now, there's a film festival at the Roxy Theater. It's the Equus. International Film Festival. If you like horses, so, you know, equestrian, that kind of deal, it's all about yeah. horses. They do it every year. It's really cool because they get a lot of old, uh, uh, basically, ranchers of a lot of these horses who tame horses and work with horses. And and you get to basically hear all these stories, you know, field trips, horses, filmmakers, receptions, and so much more. And this is going to happen at the Roxy pretty much all weekend long. It all kicks off today, like right now, at 9.30 a.m. Oh, so you guys can check it out I, anytime. I'm related to some of those people that right? do that. Yeah. Yeah. Both my aunts and uncles. Sweet. Yeah. But that's really cool. Like, it's a, it's a good horse opportunity, cool. and it's just like, it's all uh, movies and documentaries celebrating the horse. So, yeah. yep, and you can check that out. Um, you can go to the Roxy Theater on, online, so the, the Roxy uh, Theater.org, I believe. All right, so anyways, let's move on to a whole bunch of other events, because I got Saturday, I got Sunday, and I got, uh, I got Saturday, I got Friday, and I got Sunday events, because St. Patrick's Ooh. Day is on Sunday, so I got your St. Patrick's Day things that are going on here in Missoula based Ooh. on the Missoula events calendar. So Tiny Tales and Storytime, like always, every Friday, um, most days at Missoula Public Library at... Uh, 10.30 a.m., they do uh, Tiny Tales and Storytime for the little ones. Um, yarns and Watercolor, they do this every single Friday at 12 o'clock. Um, I thought that said yams. Yep. <laughs> Cribbage and Bridge is at Missoula Senior Center, best dance for in Missoula. You can have some lunch, and you can destroy each other at Cribbage and or Bridge. I love Cribbage. Right? Cri Cribbage is so dope. Fun. All right, anyways, uh, Teen Writers Group, if you uh, want to improve some of your writing skills and you are a teenager, um, Go to the Missoula Public Library every Friday after school at 3.30 p.m. It's really fun. They, they, meeting places do vary, but they usually meet in the young adult section of the library. Family fun time at the YMCA, $22 for families. Um, and it's from 3.30 to 5 p.m. You get full access to their pool, sauna, um, gym, basketball court. I don't know. They always, they always add a bunch of cool things. I haven't been there in a long time, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, art swing at MAM. So uh, Missoula Art Museum, enjoy uh, catered hors d'oeuvres and no host bar, live music, gallery tours, and one-on-one -on -one conversation with exhibiting artists from exhibits in Praise and Foley, Adrian Arleo, um, John Buck, Richard uh, Notkin, uh, Juan uh, Quick to See Smith, and uh, Jay Schmidt. And it's free, and it's uh, free if you're a member or you pay $10 for adults and $5 for students. Um, if you want to RSVP, uh, tickets are non-transferable. So I guess I non refundable, you know, like transferable, which like you buy tickets and it's like, I'm just going to give this person a ticket. It's like yeah, your name on like the ticket has to be. On it, you're set. Wow. It's like buying a ticket to like, uh, 
like a venue like the Wilma, you know. And it, it, I think it's to protect identity theft in a way, and if you mm-hmm. really think about it. Yeah, definitely. All right. So, anyways, the the number is seven two eight zero four four seven to RSVP or purchase additional tickets. Again, that number is seven two eight zero four four seven. You got to support your local um, art museum. They provide uh, free admission and free expression at the Missouri Art Museum. It's a wonderful place. Um, it's one of the few museums in the United States that basically has open door policy where people can walk in and out at any time. Mm-hmm. Most art museums you have to pay at least ten dollars just to look at the art. Look at things. Yep. So this museum is amazing, and they have a a, a, a large array of art that they uh, intertwine in the work around. And I don't know if you guys got a chance, but they was Andy Warhol exhibits there, oh. and they were amazing. Tasty. But there's no, you know, you don't don't think there's that soup in a can. Not that you know they, they you know they, they could have just recreated if they wanted to. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Okay, this is a big deal. Big Sky High School Science Circus is happening tonight and also Saturday um, from 10 a.m. to about 3 p.m. But tonight from 6 to 8 p.m., Big Sky High School Science Cir- students educate kids on science using small projects and fun activities, entertain them, inform kids. Um, this is the, basically the original Spectrum Discovery Center before Spectrum was a thing. And it's, you know, it's a fun fine science circuit. It goes into uh, uh, promoting the uh, health and human sciences um, department at the Big Sky High School since they launched their academy not so long ago. Nice. Yep, so they do a lot of partnerships with community hospitals. It's great. Um, MCT play. Um, the Putnam um, County Spelling Bee is uh, kicking off uh, again this uh, weekend. I thought it was last weekend. It was the last weekend. But wait, well, yeah, actually, this is the last weekend. Oh, okay. On Wednesday. I mentioned it was the last weekend, so this is your last chance to check out the MCT play. I heard it was really funny, really good, yeah. but it is a PG-13 play, so you might want to keep some of those younger kids at home because it's not about consider. it's not necessarily about like uh, they're not too mature for it. They just I don't I just don't think they might get a lot of the jokes. Yeah, it's might. usually just like a lot of times they just don't get the jokes. That's why it's usually for older audiences. Anyways, that is your uh, Friday um, events as well, and I'm gonna throw it to an art clip for you guys. And then I'm going to um, come back, and we're going to talk about some Saturday and Sunday. Uh, it's, and it's all about St. Patrick's Day. So stay with me. we still got some St. Patrick's Day stuff to talk about. Hey guys, welcome back. I can't wear a hat because I'm wearing this headset. Um, <laughs> awesome. All right, so let's talk about uh, St. Patrick's Day. Uh, it's not tomorrow, just so you guys know, even though the St. Patrick's Day parade here is happening in Missoula starting at noon, the step off is at noon. MCAT will be in the parade, and it all starts at the Red X's and goes until about the Grizzly, Grizzly Grocers, um, just off of, uh, I want to say, I don't know. I forgot. Yeah. I've, never, I've never been. I know. Uh, but uh, hey, but we're, hey, we're both going to be in it, so if you want to I'm going to be driving the truck for half the deal, and then I have to come right back here to set up for Saturday drop-ins, because if the parade starts at 12, and Saturday drop-ins start at 1, it's going to be pretty tight. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll ditch That's out okay. sometime. Uh, um, we, we can hold down the parade. Sometimes, uh, sometime after the Wilma or before uh, Bridge Pizza, so. Yeah. Yeah, maybe after Bridge Pizza. <laughs> yeah. Okay, anyways. 
that's, uh, that's kind of what's happening with St. Patrick's Day. Um, there's a lot more things happening for your Sunday. And again, I want to tell you guys, and we got Saturday drop-ins from 1 to 5 on Saturday. Um, Magic, it's the Gay Big Sky 2019-2020 um, pageant drag show. It's going to be at the Ballander um, tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. It's the ISCMSM for the gay, you know, gay Big Sky Pageant Day drag show. Uh, come vote for the next uh, Gay Big Skies. Uh, make sure you have a Montana Idea Grizz card. $5 at the door, uh, 7.30 show. And basically, um, I don't know, they'd give me two different times here. 7.30 and 8.30, so, yeah, just, uh, I guess the door's open at 7.30 and the show probably starts at 8.30 or something like oh, that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you okay, but, you know, if you, like, it, it's it's quite an experience. It's a really uh, fun drag show, and it really helps uh, promote LGBT uh, community events and more, and so causes, good. and other things. Okay, Bear Bay Dance is doing a contemporary dance this weekend, so batten down the hatches um, um, from March 14th through the 17th, and 21st to the 23rd, artistic director of the Bear Bay Dance, Joy French, delves into the world of words uh, for her newest evening-length concert using the full talent of the company dance. Um, the, the theme is words. Dance explores the vastly uh, fertile territories of pairing text with movement. This multimedia production is part storytelling and part abstract. Come journey down the rabbit hole with them and celebrate the tenuous place where words and dance collide. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I've seen I some like of their that. shows. Like um, a lot of times, it's like you can't necessarily be uh, direct. It has to be very indirect kind of communication with a lot of their contemporary dance. Yeah. And I saw one of the shows where. Um, there's like a, a lady and a camera to a face, and she just had this like crazy look on her face. And then they like do it's like they do the dance move like over and over again, and then they just kind of build off of it and this kind of thing. So, contemporary dance, yeah. All right, Sunday is officially St. Patrick's Day, and um, Union Club second, an second anniversary of their grill is doing specials for food, blah blah blah, starting at 11 a.m. And but the biggest thing that's happening is the uh, University Center is doing a themed um, St. Patrick's Day International Festival at the uh, University of Montana. And this brings in all the international uh, houses of the University of Montana. A lot of exchange students will be there and they'll be doing um, food. And basically think of it as an international sampling Costco place. That's awesome. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. And it starts at the UC Center um, at noon. Perfect time for lunch. Eighth annual Friends of Library Appraisal Fair. So if you have an old book that you think is worth something, bring it to the Museum of Public Library. And uh, to uh, have it appraised, it costs $10 for each book or $15 for two. Uh, the library opens at 1 p.m. on Sunday. Uh, so appraisal fair will begin as soon as the doors open. Missoula Mendelssohn Club Concert. So it's all about choir and uh, Mendelssohn Club's or like, you know, like where you just have a bunch of people hang out and they do some singing. Um, it's kind of like, you know, Lions Club, Elks Clubs and all that deals. And so uh, just letting you guys know, uh, it was really interesting because um, Joel interviewed the guy from the Missoula Mendelssohn Club about this performance. And it turns out that Missoula is one of three or four Mendelssohn clubs that still exist and is about 75 years old. Wow. So yeah, and they're doing a concert, 3 p.m. Sunday afternoon at the UM Music Recital Hall. But also, um, they're going to have rugby, I believe. Um, or not rugby, but they're going to have, um, what's that traditional Irish game where they have a, a stick shillelagh? They have a shillelagh, Ooh. and they blog. <laughs> they, they blog each other. They flog. <laughs> they flog, and they do all that stuff. But I think they uh, try to do this at the uh, University of Washington Grizzly Stadium, where they have an official um, between um, the, um, I think, the Irish uh, Studies Group versus the Thomas Marbar, because I think there's like two different oh, okay. like teams yeah. that play traditional Irish um, games. So you guys can check that out. Um, you can go to Friends of Irish Study to find out all your Irish uh, needs for uh, St. Patrick's Day weekend. But also, um, Montana, the biggest uh, Irish Day celebration ha tends to happen in Butte, and I believe that they'll have their um, parade in conjunction with the Missoula's parade around noon tomorrow. So, so those are some of your events that are going on, and I'm about out of time. So uh, Josh, do you want to take it away? Why not? Why not? All right. So for Wake Up Missoula, yeah, I'm Scott Ramph. Hit it. And I'm Scott Ramph.